e-roaming EVSE data service. In this service, EMP has its own operation, which allows him to pull EVSE static data from partner operators. This can be done with e-roaming pull EVSE data operation. Its implementation is mandatory by every EMP partner. EVSE data model used in this operation was already covered before and does not differ. Worth mentioning is that from OICP 2.3 version, response should be in paginated format. As we have seen it before, object holds last update attribute in every record that is stored in their platform. That allows Hubject to offer filtering functionality based on last call attribute added in the request. Last call is used for fetching only those data records that have changed compared to the EVSE state at the time of last call value. Besides last call, Hubject includes delta type attribute in the response, which can tell what kind of operation was performed. Unfortunately, last call filtering cannot be combined with other types of filtering, like search center, country codes, and operator IDs. Request for e-roaming pool EVSE data includes many types of filtering parameters that can be used. The only mandatory attributes are provider ID and geo-coordinates response format. Most of the filterings are very useful. For example, you can filter by authentication modes, accessibility, renewable energy, and few more. But probably the most useful one is filtering by search center, which can be provided in order to return EVSEs within a specific radius. Response for e-roaming pool EVSE data request is a list of EVSE data records. Each EVSE data record includes last update and delta type attributes, which were mentioned before. Returned list of EVSE data records is in a paginated format. E-roaming EVSE status service. Similar as for e-roaming EVSE data service, this service also has EMP dedicated operation which allows him to pull EVSE dynamic data from partner operators. This is being done with e-roaming pull EVSE status operation. Its implementation is mandatory for every EMP partner. It's worth to mention that EVSE status records are grouped per specific CPO. Cubject offers two additional functionalities for fetching EVSE statuses built on top of e-roaming pool EVSE status operation. The first one is e-roaming pool EVSE status by ID, which is used for fetching statuses based on EVSE ID list. The second one is e-roaming pool EVSE status by operator ID, which is used for fetching statuses based on operator ID list. Both of those functionalities are very important for EMP because those filtering criteria are very useful in practice. In e-roaming pool EVSE status request, only provider ID is mandatory, but you can also specify EVSE status and search center filtering. If you would like to fetch statuses by EVSE IDs, then you can provide a list of IDs under EVSE ID attribute instead of EVSE status and search center filtering. If you would like to fetch statuses based on operator IDs, then you need to provide a list of IDs under operator ID attribute instead of EVSE status and search center. Response for e-roaming pull EVSE status request is a list of EVSE status records. Each list of records is grouped per operator ID. Under operator EVSE status, unlike e-roaming EVSE data response, the data in this response is not paginated. E-roaming dynamic pricing service. When it comes to the tariffs, 
Object offers EMPs a possibility to pull pricing product information specified by CPOs in their offers with e-roaming pull pricing product data operation. Pricing product can be per specific EMP or offered to everyone. Object will verify if there is a valid pricing business contract between EMP and CPO before any data is returned. Filtering functionality is also offered by providing last call parameter in request. When it comes to the request of e-roaming pool pricing product data operation, it's very simple. We need to provide a list of operator IDs, in other words, a list of CPOs that you are interested in, and eventually you can provide last call parameter for filtering. As a response for e-roaming pool pricing product data request, you will receive pricing product data details for a specific operator. As an EMP, based on that information, you only know what kind of pricing products given operator offers. You still do not know yet how to apply them to specific EVSEs. That information is a part of the next operation. E-roaming pool EVSE pricing operation allows EMP to know exactly how pricing products are assigned to EVSE IDs by CPO. Similar as in previous operation, Hubject will verify if there is a valid pricing business contract between CPO and EMP. Request for this operation is very simple. You need to specify your provider ID as well as list of operator IDs which you are interested in. Also, last call parameter can be provided for filtering. Response for e-roaming pool EVSE pricing request is a list of operator EVSE pricing. Each object contains a list of EVSE pricing offered by specific operator. Each EVSE pricing object has a list of pricing products that can be assigned to given EVSE. If that offer is specific only to you, you will see your provider ID as well in this object. In case data is available to everyone, you will see asterisk character as a value for provider ID field. E-roaming charging notification service. This service does not differ between CPO and EMP almost at all. But as a reminder, charging notifications allow EMP to know more details about ongoing charging session, which is crucial for their customers. Logic, data model, and types of notifications are the same as for CPO-related service. The only difference is that EMP must be able to handle e-roaming charging notifications request and return e-roaming acknowledgement as a response. To sum up this part, we have covered all the services from EMP perspective. When it comes to the list of mandatory services and operations, we may divide it into online EMP and offline EMP. Online EMP must implement e-roaming authorized start and e-roaming charge detail record operations. Offline EMP must implement e-roaming get charge detail record and e-roaming push authentication data. Both types of EMP must implement e-roaming authorized remote start, e-roaming authorized remote stop, e-roaming pull EVSE data, e-roaming pool EVSE status. Of course, online EMP may use e-roaming get charge detail record and e-roaming push authentication data operation in order to take advantage of object platform and make the whole experience better.